What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games. We're gonna be checking back in on something we haven't checked in in a long time because it's had a couple major updates since the last time we checked it out. Jupiter Hell, which is one of those unsung roguelikes in my opinion. It's one of those games that never quite seems to get traction even though it's a very, very high quality roguelike in the classical sense made by the guy that made Doom RL. Which was one of my favorite roguelikes long, long, long ago before I was a YouTuber. And so in Jupiter Hell, you are a marine left behind in a facility that you crash land on. There is no one alive. You're trying to get to the bottom of what has happened. And demons and zombies and everything else are trying to stop you. What makes this game distinct from all other roguelikes on the market, all of them, except for Quasimorph, is that this game is based around firearms and taking cover and sort of division style get behind a jersey barrier, blind fire over the top, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, most roguelikes are almost entirely based around swords, magic, melee combat, bows, some, you know, some fireball spells in there. Uh, but this game is all about grenade launchers and miniguns and assault rifles and pistols with mods on them and things of that nature. And if you're into classic Berlin-style roguelikes, I think you'll like this one. So let's start a new game. We'll put it on regular. We'll play as the Marine for right now. There's currently three classes in the game. Technician, Scout, and Marine. They all play distinctly from one another. They're all running gun classes, but some of them have different things to fall back on because you have sort of a limit break in this game. All right, so now that we're in game, a little briefing on the way the game functions. You control the entire game by utilizing the arrow keys and keys around WASP. So you're going to be two hands on here. For whatever reason, the game has never gotten mouse support. I feel like the game would play perfectly fine with it. I get the feeling the lack of mouse support is largely just due to the fact that they're trying to lean into the classic roguelike thing that they're playing around with. But... I do think that mouse control would work perfectly fine with this game, like right-click to rotate your character around and look in directions, left-clicking on a guy to shoot at him, left-clicking on a tile to move there, and then like little, you know, unfolding menus and whatnot in order to loot things on the ground. You can pick up anything you want off the ground with the G key. As of right now, we've got a shotgun, we've got a knife, we've got a number of pistols. Yellow stuff in this game is mundane. So this game is definitely leaning in the direction of something like Diablo 2 or Diablo 3 as well because there's different equipment qualities that can drop on the ground that will have like mods on them, like random affixes just like in Diablo that do different things. Everything from your bullets causing bleeding uh, to like explosive rounds to you name it. Some of the rarer guns in this can get kind of wild and crazy. But for the moment... Yeah, you know, draw him forward. There we go. Blasted him. Nice and good. That revolver can sting, and we don't have armor yet. Any ar Hey, a full suit of armor right there. Item qualities go from yellow, uh, which is basically mundane. Red means it's special, but it's still mundane. Uh, it means it does something special. It's basically a remarkable version of the yellow, kind of like a masterwork. So the example I'll give you is that you can get like a normal pistol, like the one laying on the ground right in front of us. If that icon was in red, it would be an officer's pistol, which comes with burst fire selection and more mod slots. It doesn't have anything like magical about it, like some of the other guns that you'll find are technological about it, but it's just like a flatly better version. There's also blue guns. Uh, blue guns tend to be like plus one, plus two guns that have a couple of affixes on them that will do things that make you more effective. Uh, there's uh, purple guns. There's there's all kinds of things you're going to find around while you're playing in this game. And the game does have extensive gun modding. Like you can mod your guns to do all kinds of wild and crazy stuff. When you level up, you get access to a list of perks, just like you would have in something like Fallout. They are wide, they are varied, reading through all of them would take forever. They range from like passives to things that actively change the way that you play the game. For right now, I think I'm probably going to go with Tough as Nails because I find that armor stacking is really effective for the early game for keeping yourself alive. That's going to give us a plus one to our armor rating and just flatly lower the damage we take as we're moving through the game. And then we need to get back on the search to figure out where the exits are at. I think I got all the treasures and all the chests on the starting floor. And so into Callisto level two, we go. There's a lockdown in progress on this floor. That's really unfortunate for an early game character because in the early game, you survive by being very, very careful and sneaking around and making sure you pick and choose your engagements and your shots before you engage by staying in cover. Staying in cover is precisely what I'm doing right now. 
Uh, so anytime you get up against a wall, anytime you are up against like a desk or anything else, that's going to count as cover. And it's going to give you armor bonuses. And also it's going to give a malice to the enemy's ability to aim at you. If this lockdown goes through, bad things are going to happen. But there's a plus one pistol right there, so I'm going to go grab it. There's a 44 flintlock. Yup, that's a flintlock. It's got one round in the chamber. What does it actually do? I mean, it's all right. So it's got the flintlock status, which means that you can cuss the enemy if you hit them, reducing their damage by 50%. It speed loads. There's a lot of single-shot pipe weapons in this game. I don't tend to run most of them. I will occasionally run one in a fit of desperation and if I have to. But I'm just not a big fan of thumb-loading weapons. And things that give me one bullet. Another hallway down. This guy has an Uzi, which I think is a really good pickup for us. I think I'd rather fi- oh no, okay, that's super bad. Everything is terrible. They're hitting all their shots, too. Even though I had like a 50% chance to dodge all the way across that hallway, they hit every single shot. No ammo. Reload. More demons down, but we're running out of time here. I'm going to swap out my armor because your armor does have durability. I'm going to use my adrenaline ability. I haven't talked about that. Because we're playing the Marine, we have an ability that's called adrenaline what adrenaline does is it gives you a very lightweight heal and then it removes all pain from your character as you get shot you develop pain on your character and pain just flatly reduces from your chance to hit when firing a weapon we escape the lockdown though which is good is there anybody over here suicide bomber guy gotcha anybody else around there's a terminal right there for security. I don't know if it's useful to us right now. I definitely don't want to cross that bridge because I don't know what's waiting for me on the other side. And so let's just kind of like search this area first and make sure nothing's going to start shooting us in the booty crack the moment we get across the bridge. Uh, but there are a huge amount of builds and weapons and mods and things that can happen in this game. There's also a huge density of combat. That's a grenade launcher guy. They're going to tag the ground where they're going to shoot right before they shoot. They didn't used to do that. They used to just fire at you back in the day, and that sucked. Uh, now they actively have to kind of, like, aim at you first before they fire the grenade launcher. I like the idea of the grenade launcher, so I'm going to take it. The grenade launcher may be helpful in the future, depending on what we run into. Gun them down real quick. He's got really good cover, so we don't really... Oh, okay. Big old explosion. I'm very, very wounded. That's kind of unfortunate because it means I've got to use a med kit. Uh, med kits are a very, very limited resource in this game. If I run out of them, I usually just consider re-rolling because I'm like a dead man walking anyways. But we do have a med crate right here that will replace the one we just used, and it will give us a health pickup shoot him for another level up we're going to take tough as nails level two for another plus two armor and it reduces the malice we take from being in pain by 50 percent when it comes to our aiming accuracy so that'll be good there are a lot of biomes in this game they just added more with this 1.0 update there are a lot of branching paths there are a lot of things to see and explore and experience in this game i can't express that enough we'll just blow him up with a splodo barrel We may actively just want to grenade launch that. I don't know if he's dead or not. Uh, he was not dead. He was still very much alive. This guy's got us an open cover right here, which I just hate. Let's wait and see if we can bait him across the bridge. Well, we didn't bait him across the bridge, but apparently there was another nasty ghoulie waiting for us over there. I'm going to pick up this ammo while we wait and see if that guy presses up on us. I'm always low on ammo when I get the SMG early. Luckily, because there's no cover for us, there's also no cover for him. 
I'm going to pick up 762 ammo whenever I see it because 762 ammo is a huge come up. There's no guarantee we're going to get an AK or that we're going to get anything that uses the 762 in this run. Ooh, grenade launcher. Nope, that was 44 caliber rounds. I'll throw that out later. Uh, there's no guarantee that we're going to get a weapon that uses that ammunition. But in the case that we do, it's going to be a huge force multiplier for us. So I'm okay with stacking it up in my inventory as necessary. Get into cover. Fire at him. Big bot. Give him a rocket. Give him an explosive. Swap back over to the SMG and reload. He's still very much alive. Those robots, they're a big problem. Uh, probably reload right here and just wait and see who pushes the corner. It's not... Like, for how frenetic this game is and how fast-paced it is, it's never the worst idea on Earth. Just to, like, hold an angle for a second. You know, just, just hold an angle and see what comes to investigate when there's a lot of gunfire having recently gone on. The last thing you want to do in this game is get caught out of cover. This should be it. That's like legitimately one of the worst things that can happen. So if I was right here and enemies came in through the left door and the right door, I'm dead. That's all there is to this game. And so you kind of always want to fight from a foxhole if you can. Like pick a spot and that's the spot that you make your stand and make sure it only has like one access point. If it has more than that, eh, this might get a little bit sketchy when things start to get hairy. So what gates did we have out of here? So it looks like we have hub and we have mines. The game has many branching paths. They are of different rarities that will show up on the map. It's entirely possible that you'll get like a really cool map and you won't see that map again for a long time on concurrent runs. That's how many of them there are. Off of Callisto, which is where we are right now, I think there's the mines. I think there's Mimir. And I think there's like one other one that it can branch off into. And those each have their own branches that will then come back to like the final showdown with the boss before you move planets. Well, no mods on this level. That's good. I'm always worried. When I start off on a map, there's like this red text that pops up and says you are being hunted. And it gives you 60 seconds. To get as far as you can before the entire map knows where you are and starts to hunt you. It's locked. It's it's awful. I don't know if you've ever had like a prolonged gunfight with every enemy on the map simultaneously. But it can be a little hair raising. I think those are the ones that just melee. No ammo. Reload. However, there are a lot of them, and we are now bleeding. Can I get rid of bleeds with that? I cannot. Okay. I just wanted to see Valhalla Terminal. That's the other one. But I wanted to see if my adrenaline got rid of bleeding, because bleeding... I mean, it's not that bad, but it could be worse. Damn it. Suicide bomber guy. Step into cover. Uh, yeah, shoot him, Max. Oh, Christ. Wait, is that a special? Oh, dude, that's an exalted. We kind of got to deal with him. We're going to get scuffed a little bit, though. Ain't no way around it. We did get another level up, though, which means we can take Tough as Nails 3, which gives us plus 3 armor, so 3 damage reduction on each hit. And also, pain no longer affects our accuracy. I feel pretty good about that. I kind of like skilled though too. No ammo. Reload. Well, luckily he missed his shot. Uh, that's an exalted enemy. So if you've ever played Diablo three, uh, you'll know what an exalted enemy is in this title. Oh, he had a 7.62 rifle, huh? I'll take it. I don't have that much ammo for it, but I'll take it. We've also got an upgraded SMG right there. What does it do? Ripper 4, bonus damage against wounded biological enemies and plus 50% damage towards anything that was formerly a human. That pretty much covers the gambit of everything except for robots. Not bad. I'll take it. There's also a 44 hunting rifle over there. 
but I think you have to thumb load it, and I think it's bolt action too, so I don't tend to take it. Get all these drones out of my face. So many robots around here. Grab all their ammo because we're going through bullets like a maniac at the moment. This is a healing terminal. Uh, you will find various terminals throughout the game. They can do everything from dispense loot to heal your character to like whatever you want them to do. Right here, it's got three charges on this terminal. We could increase our health permanently. We can get a stim pack, which is like a super heal. Uh, we can get a med kit. I'm kind of on the fence. I like I like the stim packs though, so I'll probably take the stimmy since we're already at full health. Everything in this game is fully destructible, so all of the chairs and things that you're seeing right now, they can all be destroyed. We just picked up multi-kits right there. What these multi-tools do is you should think about these as currency that you spend in order to get advantages. So multi-tools are exactly what they sound like. They allow you to interface and data jack into the terminals, like the medical one that we just went to, and like recharge them or make them do interesting things. If I was at a security terminal right now, I could use those kits on a particularly robot heavy level to make all of the robots friendly with me so that I could just waltz through the level if I wanted to. Uh, I could do it so that it gives me a full map. I could use these on this medical terminal over here to repeatedly boost up my permanent health over and over and over again. They're your, they're, they're your multi-tools. Do whatever you want with them. I'll probably, since we're carrying so many... I'll probably permanently increase my health right there. How many more do I have? I got four. I'll take another stim pack. All right. Healing is in very short supply in this game. My advice, having played the game for 15-ish hours, is that you should hoard healing things in this game like they are the most precious resource on Earth. Do we want to go to Valhalla Terminal? What was the other one? Callisto 5. I think we can handle Valhalla, maybe. Let's go for Valhalla. Let's tune it up and do something interesting. I might die if we get a bad mod in here. But we did not get a bad mod. Uh, so every level can also have a mutator on it, depending on what tile you're on. These mutators can do everything from the lights are out, so the power is out, so you've got bad line of sight, but so does the enemy unless they're like eldritch monsters. Uh, you can get something like you are being hunted, which means in 60 turns, everything on the map simultaneously aggros you and comes for your blood. I don't think that guy saw me. Oh no, he was definitely aware of me because he caught me with a little dusting right there. Is that a suicide guy? He's not holding the little torch thing. That was a suicide guy. Yeah. Mm, this is a really bad hallway to fight in. I'm going to fall back. I don't want to fight in this hallway one tiny bit. We've already lost like 20 health, which I would have rather not lost. Maybe we'll flank around this way and see if we can fight from this corner. Mmm... That's fine by me. A little bit of a gunfight going on right here. You may have to be a little cheesy from time to time to unbury the enemy from cover. Oh, buddy, we got problems. And not just little ones either, big ones. All right, so let's go with a stim pack. We'll swap over. Hopefully they're not flanking around. We'll have to wait and see. I'm just going to like... Ah, oh, Christ. Well, now I don't want to do that anymore. Maybe I'll fire a little bit behind him in the off chance that we hit something here. It seemed like there was a lot of them. Well... Ain't really nowhere to go but forward here. So forward I go. Assault rifle dug us out of a sketchy situation right there. Let's reload all the blickies. Make sure all the llamas are ready to spit. Got a technical crate over here. It's got an upgraded combat pistol inside of it. We're kind of past the point where I want to use pistols. Like I want sheer density of fire on the enemy from where we're at right now. 
Ah, they were guarding the medical room. That would explain why they were dug in like ticks. You do get an overheal in this game uh, when you heal yourself for more than you have HP. You can also move diagonals like that, but it's kind of tricky. Sometimes it doesn't work. Basically, you got to hit two arrow keys at once, and the game should register that you would like to do a diagonal move, but sometimes it doesn't, and it gets you into trouble. Let me see if I can bait that guy forward. There we go. Now, those guys have officer pistols, which is that red icon that you're seeing right there. Not bad. Not good either, but not bad. This guy has a lot of cover. Oh, never mind. He detonated on his own. Got 166 rounds, which is nice, though. Probably won't pick those up. Got him. Ooh, grenade launcher guy, huh? Lots of drones in here. That guy's putting some serious scow on me. Oh, this is not great. Got him, got him. No ammo left. No grenade launcher ammo left, but hopefully I can fix that soon. Looks like that guy dropped the batch. We'll load the grenade launcher up. Gun him down. Damn, there's more of you guys down here, huh? Unbelievable. All right, so the little aura around their feet, what does that mean? The little aura around their feet is how accurate you are against that guy. Uh, so yellow means you'll hit, like, some of your shots. Green means you'll hit, like, all of your shots. And then for things like red, it means you're spraying and praying. Listen, grenade launcher guy, I don't need this stress in my life. How many more of you guys are dug in down here? Good lord. Well, at least we got a crate out of the deal. That's nice. Thank you for all the bullets. Ooh, 37.62 rounds as well. I need to rearrange my guns, dude. I don't have my guns arranged right now in the way that I normally have them arranged. There we go. So, like, in games like this and first-person shooters where I can customize my guns and, like, what hotkey they're on, I always go from smallest caliber to the largest caliber, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I don't have them on there, and it's throwing my muscle memory off like crazy trying to figure out what I actually want to do here. Level 5, good stuff. Let's take skilled level 2. No ammo. Reload. So that the free heal that I get from my adrenaline is even better. We've got a red key card right there. Throughout your adventures inside the hellish space station, you will occasionally find secrets and or doors that are locked with red key cards. And until you know, until you have one, you can't get in there. And there's almost always like really, really good stuff in there that you want. So keep an eye out for red key cards. There are also other ways to get into those rooms, but I won't spoil what they are because that's kind of like part of the fun of exploring the game is finding out the different options you have for solving crises. A little bit bummed out that we didn't pick up any good guns here. I suppose I should just be thankful. There's a foul stench in the air. It's probably not good. Probably just means there's a lot of demons on this floor. Would be my guess. I am now very much on fire, though, as one tends to be when dealing with demons and their shenanigans. Oh, these are the dope ones. All right. Give me that. These are the exalted kind. and they are actively going to chew me up. So I swapped into the AK real fast. We're still at really good health right now, though, weirdly enough. What's that, the Reaver's Heart? All right, I'll take it. Better a Reaver's Heart than a Reaver's Fart. Drop him. There's a lot of demons around here, dude. This floor is a little bit stacked with the old demonology, but this is a tremendously satisfying roguelike. Why this doesn't get credit for being one of the better roguelikes on Steam, I honestly 
have no idea because it is like this game is up there with caves of cud not in terms of like so caves of cud gives you a giant storybook world to play in where crazy and wild random stuff happens this game gives you a controlled environment that is full of intense firefights every time you clear a corner the two games are targeting completely different demographics of roguelike players. I would put this game up there with like Path of Acra, for example, is another really fast paced, really balls to the wall roguelike that I would recommend to just about anybody uh, that's very similar to this, except with like Bronze Age swords and sorcery. And I like it. I honestly think that, oh my God, please die. I'm bleeding again. Why am I always bleeding? They weren't kidding. I think I can tell why it's stinky here. There's a lot of demons. Ugh, these big rooms, dude, they make my ass itch. I hate these big rooms because picking cover is like a nightmare when you're in these big rooms because you don't know if you're going to get flanked or not. Please stop. All right, so we know there's a demon back over here. There we go. So we de-infested an area of the station, which gave us bonus XP, which is really nice. But as I was saying, if you're like a lot of roguelikes tend to be sort of a slow ASCII experience, not this game. This game is intense from the moment you drop till the moment you die. And I think that's what it brings to the table versus all of its competition. And it knows what its strengths are. Like you can tell the developer knows what strengths and what wheelhouses this game is playing towards. This is like the very, very rare game that's trying to create a game that exists somewhere in between Doom 3. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, it's trying to find somewhere that exists in between Doom 2016 and a classic Berlin-style roguelike. And you wouldn't think you could blend those two ideas together, but the developer has actually done it fairly magnificently by giving the player a game world that's tremendously different every time you go through it. Different weapons come up, different things happen every single time you go through the path you're going to take through the space stations and the planets tends to be different each time you go through what does the reaver's heart do regenerate 25 percent of your health but healing is half as effective okay we've got a marine's helmet over here it's valsec that means that it's got increases all repairs received so if i use a multi-kit in order to heal this helmet uh, it gets more healing out of it and the armor does the exact same thing. So they're not technically magical armors, but they are kind of like interesting upgraded armors that we can carry with us. Now's the moment where I've really got to decide whether or not I've got the stones. Let's see if there's something useful here. I don't want that. Get that out of here. I've got to decide if I've got the stones to go to the final conflict inside Valhalla Terminal, or if I just want to leave and go back onto the normal path. I say let's YOLO it, dude. We're close to the end of the episode anyways. Let's see if we can shut down this party. So we'll take it slow. I hear something really big in this next room. Yeah, so big giant death robot is kind of what we're looking at right now. I would prefer not to deal with Big Giant Death Robot just this second. Big Giant Death Robot is going to follow up, but how much is he going to follow up? I passed a whole bunch of turns. I don't think he's super interested in coming after us right now. But I will take my grenade launcher out. Oh, there's many of them. Oh, no. Oh, there's so many big giant death robots. There's so many. We got one. We got two. Give me... Let's go cover master, I guess, because we are kind of camping cover right now, like a weenie. All right, giant death robots are down. 
Kind of. Reload, grab all their ammo. Okay, another one bites the dust. So glad we picked up this AK, dude. We would, like, actively really be struggling right now if we hadn't gotten this gun. This thing's damage is just so good. Ow, he fired a missile at me. What a dick. We're kind of making progress here. His HP's going down. That's better. Hey, down he goes. Guardian robot beaten. I don't hear a whole lot more movement. That don't mean they're not here, though. I think that's all of them. Oh, we're done here already? All right, so what did we get for our efforts? We've got an AV-2 tactical visor. What does that do by comparison to what we have? So the AV-2 tactical visor gives us a bot scanner. We can see all turrets and bots on our mini-map, and then we get 50% aim bonus. That's pretty good, but it's not giving us any armor. Oof. It's kind of a toss-up whether hitting your shots or soaking shots is more important because situationally, hitting your shots can be incredibly important when you're fighting long distance down a hallway or whatever. That aim bonus is definitely going to matter. But the armor is nice for when the enemy gets a jump on you and you need to, like, scramble. A 12-gauge auto shotgun. Baby, you speak in my language right now. You're speaking my language real good. Double damage. After you throw a grenade, it puts burning on enemies. It debuffs the enemy with a slowdown status. Does 36 slash damage. So probably not great versus robots, but pretty rad versus everything else. And there's where that Got red no key matters. Key Unfortunately, I don't have a blue key card right now. Shut down Calsec. I don't think that gets us in, though. Security units kill everything on sight. Needs a fucking key card. Yeah, it does. It needs a key card. Bummer. Because I would love to have that key card. The downside to this auto shotgun is that we don't have much ammo. A VS revolver. What does the VS revolver do? A high explosive revolver. So it has three shots. It fires hydrosplosive ammo that explodes enemies that are killed. It puts burning on people. It's it's a pretty nasty pistol. I guess I'll do something like that since we already got explosives, but we need to look out for ammunition. I don't have the blue key card, unfortunately, so there's not really much else that we can do here. So I'll just go back up, and then we'll see if we can evac through the right-hand side. But we're getting towards the end, I think, of the first planet, where you get ready to fly to a different planet and get yourself into trouble. The 1.8 update adds a whole bunch of endgame content to diversify paths that you can take in the endgame uh, so that it's less samey. Is that a turret, or is that not awake? It's disabled. Oh, I disabled the security on the previous floor so we don't have to worry about it here. Good. Ow. This guy shot with a minigun. Thanks, I hated it. It's always tempting to pick up the minigun, but the minigun has the accuracy of, like, a mole with the shakes, and so I'm always nervous about taking it. Ooh, free stim pack though. Definitely take that. I can't. I can't recommend this roguelike highly enough. If you're look, if roguelikes are always under stimulating to you because they're very slow and they're very plodding, and like you've got to kind of like think about each and every single turn. This game, in my opinion, is a really good replacement for that. This or Path of Acra are Locked. both like balls to the wall, fast-paced roguelikes uh, that, in my opinion, are kind of reinventing bleeding six. Oh, that's gonna hurt. 
gonna hurt and I'm gonna hate it. That guy's got a minigun. Oh, buddy. This room was a little more hectic than I expected it to be. But as I was saying, back to my original thought, this game and Path of Acra to me, rec they, they, so what Caves of Cud did for world building and roguelikes, this game and Acra are doing for speeding up the combat and breakneck pace of a roguelike. And I think there's room for that inside the industry. I'm not particularly good at this game. I can't particularly comment on what the end game looks like because I never get there. I always die. Uh, somewhere on like the second planet but this is a very very fun game that i highly recommend do i want to swap in for this guy right here do i want to swap in for the magic automatic rifle you have a higher critical hit chance so it's got like a really high it's got a 40 percent chance to crit and then it gets bonus damage after we move what's the old nine times three impact versus 11 times three impact I think the cr I think the crit will make up for it, and the availability of ammo is what has me seduced right there. But this right here is Jupiter Hell. In my opinion, one of the best roguelikes on Steam, if you like classic roguelikes. It can hold its head up high against all of the other venerable 10-year projects on Steam that have a lot of cool stuff going on with them. I will see you all later. Thank you for stopping on in. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to do that for yourself. Today up on the chopping block, we were checking in on an old friend, Jupiter Hell. I've already told you how much I admire this game and how good I think this game is if you're into these sorts of game types. I will see you later. Thank you for spending your time with me, and it's time for me to go. Pretty successful run this time around.